We have multiple new bright regions that are rotating into Earth view, and a massive filament in the Earth strike zone barely hangs on. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. All eyes are on the sun this week. We have some crazy stuff going on both on the front side and on the far side of the sun that we just can't seem to look away from. As we take a look at the front side disk, you can see region 2855 rotating off of the sun's west limb, but you can also see new regions rotating onto the sun's east limb. That one in the north is region 2859, and sure enough, it was firing off solar storms back on the 19th and possibly even earlier than that. We also see a region in the south that it's firing off some solar storms as well. Neither of those are Earth-directed, but we do have. Look in the north. Do you see this massive filament? Oh my gosh, it's like a big suspension bridge just kind of lifting and hovering over the top of the sun like that. We've been watching this thing for weeks now, it seems, and every time it looks like it's going to erupt, it just kind of rains off some of its plasma and just kind of restabilizes itself. So, uh, I have no idea if this region is actually going to lift off. It looks like it will, and right now it's in the Earth strike zone, so if it does lift off, it could be sending us an Earth-directed solar storm. So Aurora photographers, you know, do your Aurora dances or keep your fingers crossed that this solar storm actually will launch and give us some decent Aurora. Meanwhile, we also have this big coronal hole. This thing is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone in about three days or so, and it'll be sending us some fast solar wind, so we might get a little bit of Aurora at high latitudes just from that, but probably not all that much. Really, the big story is when we look at all of these bright regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days, oh my gosh, we could have some more solar storm producers. As a matter of fact, as we take a look at our far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun from the side. You can see that big snake-like filament, that big suspension bridge, kind of in the center disk right there. It's a little bit harder to see in this wavelength, but you can still kind of see that nice big arch there just aching to erupt. And then, to the east limb, look at all this stuff. On the 19th, you can see that massive uh, solar storm being launched in the north. There was one that was also launched in the south, and you can see there's like four or five different uh, active regions. All of these regions are going to be rotating into Earth view in the next few days. We're already beginning to see that solar flux boost. We're already going to be seeing that uh, X-ray flux. We've seen some B and C class flares. So some of these could be flare players. They could definitely give us some more noise on the radio bands, and that could be issues for both radio comms and for space traffic. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase on our way to a third quarter, and by the 30th, the moon will still be about 50% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the course of this week. Now, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 55% chance of a major storm. And this could last in through midweek and possibly in close to the weekend before things begin to calm down. So we have some good aurora chances at high latitudes. Now, at mid latitudes, we're really only expecting unsettled conditions but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And again, this could last over a couple days, uh, probably quiet down a lot faster than it will at high latitudes, though. But still, nonetheless, aurora photographers, you should definitely keep your batteries charged because we really could get some decent aurora from this uh, fast solar wind. It really matters how strong it is and how long it lasts. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, not everything is totally in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We actually have a new region. This is region 2859 that is rotating into Earth view now, and we've been watching it since well, seeing it on the sun's far side. It could be an M-flare player. In fact, the Space Weather Prediction Center has given us about a 5% chance of M-class flares right now, and this risk could be going up as we see more regions rotate into view over the course of this week. So you GPS users, if you are near dawn and dusk, you might have some GPS issues. Uh, we are having about a 30% chance of uh, C-class flares, and we are seeing some extra noise in the X-ray flux right now. So 
definitely watch your reception near dawn and near dusk because you could be a little bit affected. Also, amateur radio operators, because of this, you will be getting a bit more noise on the bands. So expect that. Expect to get a little bit of a pop, pop, pop every now and again because that's just the sun acting up all on the sun's day side or the earth's day side. Meanwhile, we are seeing that solar flux rise. We're getting slowly closer to the 80s and we could be in the 80s by the end of this week. So enjoy the uh, better uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side as well. Now, also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is still a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly at high latitudes and high altitudes and also fly over 800 hours annually. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose. This is the D2 minor range. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. And it does include prenatal passengers. So the space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. We have multiple bright regions that are beginning to rotate into Earth view. One of them is already an M flare risk. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy the boost in the solar flux this week as these regions rotate into Earth view. But also know that there is going to be a little bit more noise on the bands and an increasing risk for radio blackouts as more of these regions rotate into view. And we already know that there's solar storm producers, and possibly M-flare players. Now, GPS users, I'm also going to tell you that you're going to have to deal with the same thing. Right now, near dawn and dusk, you could have issues a little bit from all of this radio noise. So just understand your reception near dawn and near dusk could be affected. Now, also, we have that bright uh, filament, that massive uh, filament that is just hanging on for dear life, it seems. It's like this big suspension bridge over the northern part of the sun. We've been waiting for this thing to erupt for weeks, it seems now, and it still is hanging on. But right now, it's critical because it's moving through the Earth strike zone. It, so if it breaks off and launches off as a solar storm, it will be Earth directed. So Aurora photographers, I know we have this fast solar wind that we're expecting, and that could give us a nice solar storm here over the next couple days. But also keep your fingers crossed because we might have a another solar storm being launched. Not to mention all those new regions rotating into Earth view could also give us more solar storms. So all of these forecasts right now could change in a heartbeat. So just keep that in mind and be sure to keep your batteries charged. And now GPS users, back to you once again. We do have that fast solar wind that's coming. So, you know, you're going to have to deal with uh, a bit of issues near, uh, not just near dawn and dusk, but also on Earth's night side. Please do not fly your drones anywhere near Aurora because uh, you could have some more GPS issues along in, inside that region as well. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.